After the success of Hoist Gracie in the first UFC tournament, many people took Jiu-Jitsu for the perfect combat weapon and took it as the strongest martial art in the world. But there were those who saw a trick in this, and one of these people was John Peretti, forcing the opinion that the organizers deliberately brought Hoist with the most convenient rivals for him, and he won without any problem. In 1995, Peretti decided to create his own organization, which he called Extreme Fighting, to find out if the jiu-jitsu technique was so good in real combat. John's bet was on Russian sambo fighter and judoka Igor Zinoviev, who after moving to the USA, fought in underground fights without rules and according to Peretti, was able to give battle to the indestructible jiu-jitsu. He placed Igor in one part of the tournament grid of four fighters, and the best jitsu he could invite to the other, so that if both were successful, their clash would take place in the final of the tournament. Initially, John's choice fell on the three-time UFC champion Hoist Gracie, who wasn't against taking part in this, but some organizational issues didn't allow him to do so. Then Carlson Gracie sent his student Mario Sperry to the tournament, who was considered by many at that time the best jiu-jitsu fighter in the world and his record was 272-0. To be honest, there was no documentary confirmation of this wonderful statistics and some fighters of that time even recorded sparrings as a victory in a battle. The middleweight tournament was opened by Igor Zinoviev, whose record was then 15-0, although many fights on Sherdog were not recorded, since at that time the statistics were not as carefully tracked as it is today. Igor was born in Leningrad, and until the age of 4, he was a very weak and sick child. Then when he grew up, he was engaged in sambo, judo and boxing. He served in special forces, and then worked in the police. In 1991, he accidentally met an American priest, who saw his battles and invited him to try his hand in America, and Igor accepted the offer. When he arrived to the USA, he didn't manage to find that priest through the contacts he had left, but he accidentally met his old acquaintance from Russia, who helped him with the training hall, and then he already began to fight in underground fights without rules, which actually led him for this tournament. Igor was opposed by boxer Harold Herman, whose record was 17-0, but again there was no confirmation of this record and we focus only on the fighter's word. Igor Zinoviev and Harold German set to go. If I was oh to my god! god. In bad shape right now. Oh my god, look at this. Igor immediately decided to show who was daddy and immediately attacked Herman, who once on the floor could do absolutely nothing and was just trying to survive. At first, Zinoviev tried to carry out a submission on his leg, and after it failed, he simply hammered the boxer into the canvas, and won the fight in 40 seconds. So Igor went to the final in anticipation of Marius Perry, and Harold's perfect record was ruined, and after that he didn't fight without rules anymore. In the second fight of the middleweights, we have the world jiu-jitsu champion and the favorite of the whole tournament, Marius Perry called Zen Machine, who was one of the best students of Carlson Gracie and had a black belt and also crazy record of 272-0 and the commentator talking about Mario compared him with Mike Tyson, only in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu world. He was opposed by a karate pro with kickboxing skills, Roger Moncayo. His overall record was 7-0. Although, by pointing it out, Rudyard apparently forgot how four months ago he was choked by Patrick Smith at UFC 6. Mario immediately enters the clinch and transfers the opponent to the ground, while at the same time finds himself in the mount, which was practically a death sentence for the Karateka. Mario twists the shoulder knot, but Rudyard passes the test and even swips, although he managed to win the position for a very short time. Mario regains the mount and starts ramming Richard into the canvas, until he taps for mercy. Confident and quick victory for Mario and that's why expected duel of Igor against Zen Machine was inevitable, after both fighters dealt with their opponents quite easily. So the final match of the tournament remained, in which those for whom this event was created, Igor Zinoviev and Mario Sperry, who one might say laid the foundation for the classic confrontation between Sambo and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, came together. And we go now with the final fight. Mario enters the clinch right away and takes Igor to the ground, but he didn't manage to control Igor on the canvas for a long time. 
and Zinoviev found an opportunity to break free and get back on his feet. The biggest escape tonight, and maybe he did. After a few missed low kicks, Maria enters the clinch again and performs a takedown. Igor, being on his back, responds well to Mario with punches and then throws on a guillotine, but it was a small chance to choke the black belt from this position. Oh, he did it! Just like I said! He's trying to crank him! He's got guard! He's got a finishing hold! If Mario doesn't get up, he's got a finishing hold! Mario was in the mount for most of the fight and threw overhead punches to Igor, but Zinoviev was able to sweep again and take the Brazilian's head for a choke hold. Igor reverses the whole position oh, into Kasigatami. He has turned it out for these things. And he's tried to go behind. Sperry is trying to, to slip out and go behind. When the already tired fighters got to their feet and were resting while standing at the net, Mario decided to jump on Igor's back, but it was a complete fiasco. Zenoviev passed the Zan machine and kicked him in the head, after which he carried out a guillotine. While with this blow he seriously cut the face of Mario, and I didn't really understand why he gave up, because of a cut or a submission, although the official statistics say TKO. The fight commentators compared this upset to the Tyson vs Douglas, and John Peretti's idea was a success, and the myth that Jiu Jitsu couldn't be defeated was dispelled. After this fight, Igor Zinoviev received the nickname Houdini, and Peretti believed that this fight was one of the most heroic of all he had ever seen. After this tournament and several more fights, Zinoviev's rating went to the sky, and he signed a contract with UFC, performing at the UFC 16 tournament against Frank Shamrock. But that evening, amplitude slam from the champion put an end to Igor's career in mixed martial arts. While falling, he broke his collarbone and this fight was the last in his career. Many believed that it was the injury that caused the end of Igor's career, but in one of the interviews he said that the reason lays elsewhere, relations with the UFC in particular, who simply wrote off the fighter in reserve and for a long time couldn't provide him with a fight, and they didn't help with the treatment leaving him alone with his problem. If you liked my video and want more reviews of such tournaments, like and help to promote these videos, and also post in the comments which fighters you want to see reviews about, or which old school tournaments to remember.